Switzerland. We are out on an afternoon uh, trip. The girls did some school this morning and uh, we found an online tutor that works really good. Uh, she does all the lessons on Skype, so she's helping Angelique and Chloe right now for three hours per day to start. Um, and then we'll see how it goes. But so far so good. They're alternating some of their classes. And um, Julia's doing it all on her own, but uh, it gives us the afternoons free, more or less. I still work in the afternoons as well, but it kind of works out for our schedules to give us and give myself a little bit of flexibility and um, kind of takes the weight off my shoulders to have to do homeschooling and work and cooking and laundry and all the stuff that goes with raising a family. So, uh, so anyway, so today we are right now in a little town called Toon and um, we're just gonna go see this really cool castle that's right along the water here. That's what it looks like. And then we're gonna go head over toward Interlaken, which is really close by, and uh, go up and see what Interlaken has to offer and um, see all the attractions and why, you know, basically find out why do people go to Interlaken in Switzerland. So here we go. Hope you guys enjoy it. Um, so the lake that I'm gonna show you, they call it uh, Thun Lake. And in Swiss German, I think it's Thunersee or something like that. And see what's behind us? This like ancient castle. And it's really cool because it's literally right on the water. And then the view behind it has like this most spectacular mountains it's just like it's so cool because you get the picture of the or the contrast of the color of the water of the blue blue and then the snow-capped mountains in the distance there it's just so cool you see this the blue of the water yeah i didn't realize how high the mountains were over here Something peaceful about the waters like this. Queen Chloe of Tune. So this drive is like really cool because you can see the lake and you've got this small little winding road. And um, so we're still on Lake Two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say Lake Burn, but Lake Two. Burn doesn't have a lake like that. Um, and the reason why it's called Interlaken is because it's in between two lakes. So they spell Laken like the German word L-A-K-K-E-N. So the the two lakes are Tune, and then on the other side it's Brienz. Interlaken is a town. It's not a city. It has about uh, 5,000 people who live there, so it's pretty small, lots of tourists, and the main reason there's so many tourists is because it's like a good starting point. I like your little mermaid back there, Angelique. So like you can, there's lots of hotels, right? And lots of little souvenir shops and stuff, and so it's a really good base to go from there up to all the different mountain peaks, which you're gonna see. So they have like the Schilthorn, and then they have like, um, What's the other big one I'm thinking about? Mm -hmm. The young crowd. The young crowd. Um, we did it a long time ago, so we're going to share video footage um, or pictures at least in this video, so you can see what it was like. Because it was really, really pretty, really cool, and it like it was our very first time going like all the way up. And then they had to like you have to take a train and then a cable car and then this and then that. So it was just, like felt like you're going up into like heaven. <laughs> Oh, 
some of the sports they have in Interlaken. You can do um, paragliding if you want. You can jump off like the mountain if you're absolutely crazy insane with one of those like suits that kind of flies you through the air like Superman. And um, I think there's like probably one person per week. I, I'm not sure the numbers, but I feel like there's a lot of people who die every single week here trying to do that, which is, is it true? Yep, one, one, one person per week. Is it? Yeah, it's crazy. Why? Because they do that thing where you jump off the Face jumping. There, yeah, they do like, like the one we saw last weekend where the lady jumped off the cliff. This girl is behind us. Yeah. Somebody's obviously jumping with her, with like a GoPro or something, you know? To film it? Come on, like, can we film that? Yeah, with a GoPro And it's live, like, think about it. Okay, so we're going to see her. Where is she? 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 So they do that. I don't know why they have like such an adrenaline rush or what, you know, it, it's very, very risky. I wonder if they even get life insurance, if that's even applicable if you're doing crazy stunts like that. But um, anyway, so you can do that if you want, or you can just go for a bike ride. It's quite a flat, uh, flat village, so you can go for a bike ride. And then they have all the trains and transportations to go up and visit all the uh, mountains in the area, which are just spectacular. So that's kind of like the main things to do while you're visiting Interlaken. All right, we just stopped at the campsite. And um, what's really special about this campsite is it's a campsite in Interlaken, and it's the one that we um, stayed at one of the ones that we stayed at because we stayed at many but it was one of the ones we stayed at four years ago when this whole journey of um, traveling and being far away from home uh, happened I guess far away from home in a sense because we did move to Florida for a few years before that so we were always away from home but you know when you're kind of in the same time zone and the same kind of continent you feel kind of close to home and now we're like you know time zone six hours away and far away from family it's not like you can just you know invite people down and they could drive there if they wanted to or whatever it's, it's really far or two hour flight so um, so this is one of the campsites that we stayed at and it has a really cool view it's right on the lake really really beautiful over there in a distance I don't know if you can see I don't know if this makes any sense but basically over that way there over there is where we came in on that cool road and um, it's just really nice. So we stayed at uh, one of these camps with like Euro Camp that has the little cabins and stuff like that. And uh, it's really, really cool, really nice and uh, neat to see the memories and talk to the girls and show them this is where we stayed. And they're like, oh, really? They don't even remember. So, And uh, when we came back though, it was May when we were here uh, the first time and it was like, uh, I want to say 10 degrees and they even had a bit of snow. So we were frozen because we're used to the warmth of Florida and like hot heat of the south and then we were here going oh my gosh and I don't even think we had the proper gear so we froze our butts off but it was still nonetheless like absolutely beautiful to see and uh, all the mountains were fully snow capped and it was just gorgeous so anyway neat to bring back memories and stop here along the way. Hey girls do you remember this campsite at all? No? You would have been five years old, Chloe, and Angelique, you were seven. Julia? 
I remember a little. I don't know it's the, if it's because of the videos. Julia was nine. You remember? Do you remember that it was cold? You remember? Not. I don't really remember because it's just been a video. Uh huh. Um, so here's a good view of where we are and what's around us. So here, like you have the Lake of. Okay, I'll come check it out. Lake of Tune, and then the Lake of Briance. And this is the small town of 5,000 people or so uh, called Interlac. And, and the reason why it's so popular is because you've got all the sports that you can do on the lakes, and then you've got all these like trains that go up and up and up and up. And you can go to all these different like tops. This is the, the one that's really popular, the Young Frau, it's called. And then there's the Schilthorn. And uh, so you can see it's like 4,000. 158 meters, so four kilometers high, super, super high. I'm like, the, just the view is just amazing. So that's that one. This is another map that I just found here. So again, I get a, get a, like a bit of a perspective of what it's like. This one here, going up on this side that doesn't show you on the other map is the Schilthorn. So that's the other kind of sister mountain. So the two that you can go up your journey would be, you would take a train like this, then you would take a cable car, and then another train, and then a cable car, and then another cable car, all the way up there. So it's like quite the journey to get up, but it's really cool. Once you're up there, you get the most magnificent view of the Swiss Alps. I'm getting you with this pretty music. See here, they have a menu. It's actually an error that because in the summer months it's so hot in countries like Saudi Arabia and Kuwait or wherever they're from and they all come here so you'll see a lot of people covered up in, especially in Interlaken and, and touristic kind of areas so with beautiful music eh girls? You like it? This is the Grand Hotel, which is the Victoria Jungfrau. It's a five-star, right? Hotel, I think. It's probably super expensive, but I'm sure well worth it and absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, it's definitely a tourist town if they even have a Hooters restaurant in Switzerland. That is crazy. Wow. Okay, so right in front of us is the casino. So for those of you who like to play slot machines or gamble, that's the place for you. So this whole village is so touristic-y. You can find all the watch shops, the souvenir shops, activities. Tour around the town? Oh no, sweetie, the town's super small. But yeah, you could do bike ride rentals. Look at all the bikes they have for rent. And like I was saying before, like it's it's a flat kind of village here, so it's perfect for biking, unlike some other Swiss cities where you can't really bike around too much because of all the mountains, but this one's really nice and flat. Did you find them anywhere? Oh, sticker. These are like the real ones, so open some of these ones up to hear how they go. Try it. This is like what my dad got me when I was a little girl, girls. Let's see all the different ones. It's like a homemade box. Yeah, well, they're souvenirs that are really nice ones, right? The music. So this is the tiny little village of Interlaken. They only have like, I think, one little zone which is coming up that has, that is no car, like pedestrian zone. But other than that, it's so small that cars go everywhere. So it's super, super touristic-y. I had no idea it was this, this uh, attractive to the tourists, but I guess it makes sense because you're really in the center of it all. And there's everything. You have all the hotels, all the bed and breakfast, all the inns, all the shops, all the watch companies to buy your watches from. Just like everything you can think of is here. All the jewelry stores. No, I'll give it back. It's afternoon. So something that just happened to me that was like, for me, I don't know, it was just so nice, is that um, 
somebody from the United States just said something like, kind of in passing, uh, because Chloe was asking about not using her 20 franc bill and I left my wallet in the car and, and then the guy said something like, oh, you better keep your word, mama or mom or something like that. And anyway, I just wanted to say it's so nice to hear somebody speaking to you just randomly because typically like in this part of the world, people in Switzerland anyway and definitely in France and and other countries, they don't just like randomly come out and talk to you unless like either they know you or unless there's like a reason to have a conversation. They don't just like kind of, you know, and that's the biggest thing that shocks us all the time when we go back to the US and Canada is like how friendly everybody is. And it's very superficial, of course, but it's still nice. You just feel the love, you know, whereas um, you don't feel the love so much when people aren't like that. <laughs> you just get used to it. But it just felt so homey to have someone do that. I was kind of like, oh, that was so nice. And I just kind of want to stay and hear some more English speaking people from America. It just feels so good. So this is like the main pedestrian street in Interlaken and um, as you can see it's just like literally filled with um, little touristy kind of knickknacks and beautiful jewelry that you can buy. Here comes a little horse. I just want to do that. So it's really a nice village to go visit and to make your home base for going to see all the other attractions and things to do um, that are in the area. So we're gonna go up now and do a little bit of a tour where we're gonna go up to about a thousand meters and then we're gonna take a telecabin and do a little loop-de-loop. -loop. So go enjoy the breathtaking views of the mountains and uh, the blue skies that we have today. So let's go. down the mountain, right? <laughs> that would have been crazy. Yeah. Right now we're going from the train station and then we're doing a 15 minute walk Hello. to the next, what, bus? No, I think we take a... Nice. Train. Oh yeah, bus, isn't it? Okay. I think it's a bus that takes us back down. Uh, so, let's just say it. The chill? Why would you have the chill at 1600 meters and... Maybe it's like chillaxing. Ah, chill, yeah. like chillaxing, not like chill, like that? cold chill. It's that like makes sense. Uh, I get it, I get it. Here's like so the you chill or you have thrill. thrill. So like, then here you go up to like the long world and whatever else. You can and this is... Here, yeah. Oh yeah, look at this. Hold on. See the view, the thrill, and then the chill. The view, the view, the thrill. Whoa. Yeah, I'm coming. And then the chill. The view is fun. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. There's 007. right now we're at 
1300 meters. It's called Grimmelwald. And then we have to take another telecabine down to the bus. So there's, just so you're following the, the journey. Okay, let's see you go down. Okay, nice. Okay. Give me We just found this really cool hostel with the most amazing view. So here you take the sheets and then you, when you're done, you put them down in the washing machine downstairs. Uh -huh. And you have to take off your shoes, of course. Uh -huh. It's really nice. It smells delicious in here. Here they have like a kitchen and then there they have like a little bar area. And then, oh, 1990. Machine okay. Yeah, it's really nice. Puts down. And then, like, oh my gosh, outside, their view is like absolutely amazing. This hostel here was actually like the little hostel where before it was built in 1563, guys. It's crazy. And it was like the home of two families. The cows and the goats were in the basement, and then above was their house, and then. So it's in 1939, the house was turned into a hostel and then someone else bought it in 1996 and they're showing like some of the old and the new pictures like the old kitchen, the old sink and like how they had to bring in the oil tank that literally came in with a helicopter. So the showers used to be outside and now it's just like it's so pretty inside, it's beautiful, they really renovated it really really nice. It's right beside the um, telecabin right there. So, so it's how perfect, handy. so whenever you want to go down. It's right across the street. Exactly. Not and the street. it's right in front of this ginormous viewpoint of mountains up there. Make sure you subscribe and give us a big thumbs up.